Good evening, everyone. Tonight we're going to talk about how to handle an IRS levy or garnishment. Chances are, if you're watching this video, it's possible you may have experienced that or you may know somebody who has either had their bank account levied or their wages garnished. This usually results from owing the IRS substantial amounts of money, and there are several ways that this can happen. What I've found was most of the time when somebody has a bank levy or a wage garnishment, they usually haven't filed their tax returns in several years or more. One of the things that happens is that if you don't file your tax returns and the IRS thinks that you're going to owe them money, the first thing that they're going to do is they're going to send you a notice asking you to file the back returns that haven't been filed. And what happens is they'll send you several notices, but at some point, if you don't file the returns that the IRS requests that you file, what they could do is they could file a return for you. They call that a substitute for return. And basically what happens is that there, are certain, there is certain income and expense information that gets sent into the IRS. For example, the IRS receives W-2 information, 1099 information, they receive mortgage interest information, and they may receive information on a lot of other transactions such as stock sales or real estate sales. In any case, what they do is they take the information that they have on file and they file sort of like a mock return. They call it a substitute for return. They file a return for you based on the information that they have available. And they don't allow any deductions in that situation, so usually you end up getting screwed. But then what happens is, once the IRS files that substitute return, then it comes out that you owe them money, well then they start trying to collect that money. And if you ignore them, and you don't pay them, at some point in time, they're going to either levy your bank account or garnish your wages. Now, the first thing you want to understand is what the difference is between a levy and a garnishment. A levy usually takes place in a bank account. And a levy is a one-time thing. Like each time they levy your bank account, it's only good for that one time. So you don't know what day the, the levy is going to hit, but whatever day the levy hits the bank, whatever's in your bank account, that's what the IRS is going to get. And then if they want to levy you again, they can but then they've got to go through the whole procedure of putting the paperwork through and notifying the bank. So it's not as easy for them to levy you a second time. They can do it, but it takes longer. Now, a wage garnishment, on the other hand, is good until canceled. So if they garnish your wages, basically they're going to get a good chunk of your pay until arrangements are made with the IRS to get the, the garnishment released. Now, how do you get this taken care of? Well, if you have a levy or a garnishment on your wages or your bank account, uh, first thing you got to do is uh, determine if you filed all your tax returns. I mean, it could be that you just owe the IRS money and you haven't paid them, and they've asked you for the money and you still haven't paid, so finally they levy or garnish you. But if you haven't filed all your tax returns up to date, you're going to have to get those filed because in order to stop levies or garnishments, you've got to get yourself on an installment plan and make some sort of arrangement with the IRS to start paying your taxes. But you can't get on an installment plan until all your past due returns have been filed. So if you haven't filed your back returns, the first thing you need to do is get them filed. If you can't find the information that, that you need to file the old returns, you can obtain transcripts from the IRS. They're known as a wage and income transcript, and you can request that, and they'll furnish you with that. And that will show all of the income information that the IRS has on you. Then 
you're going to have to do the best based on the records you have to figure out what your expenses are. And one way or another, you're going to have to try your best to put together the most accurate return possible. Then those returns have to get filed with the IRS. Once those returns are filed, then you can work out an installment plan. Now, as a general rule, the IRS wants a minimum of 1 over 72 times what you owe. In other words, they want you to be able to pay your stuff approximately over six years. So, for example, if you owe $7,200 and you want to pay it over 72 months, the IRS would divide by 72. That's $100 a month. That's the least amount that the IRS would take from you if you want to set up a quick installment plan. If you can't afford that and you want to pay less, then you're going to have to furnish the IRS with collection information. They're going to want to know how much you make and what your expenses are, and they may ask you for proof such as uh, the last few pay stubs or the last three months bank statements, and they may ask you for other receipts as well. If you can pay one seventy-second of what you owe, you can set up a quick and dirty installment plan. So once again, let's assume you owe fourteen thousand four hundred. You could get on a, an installment plan with the IRS for two hundred a month, and it would go pretty smoothly. Now, if you owe the IRS more than fifty thousand dollars, then life also gets more complicated. Then you're going to also have to provide the IRS with collection information. Now. If you have to make a special deal with the IRS because you can't pay them, if you could show them that you're unable to pay or unable to pay the amount they want, it is possible to be on a possible on a temporary uncollectible status or it is possible to pay them a small amount of money. However, they will file liens against you and your credit is going to suffer. But chances are if you're behind in filing your tax returns, chances are your credit isn't good and your credit score has already suffered so that's probably the least of your problems but to sum it up what you want to do is you've got to file all of your back returns and you've got to get yourself on an installment plan and then at that point as long as you pay the IRS the monthly amount that you agree upon they will release the wage garnishment and they won't bother you any further as long as you can you uh, keep up with your monthly payments. Well, I hope this is hope helpful to you. And uh, if you have any questions, feel free to, you can call me. My number is 770-419-3399. You can email me at johnmillercpa at gmail.com. Or you can go to my website, www.incometaxpreparation.com. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in my next video.